He was, uh, President Trump today was at Arlington National Cemetery for, for wreath-laying ceremonies to honor three of the 13 Americans killed that day in the suicide bombing because, you know, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's incompetent political and uh, rushed exit from Afghanistan, as you heard, uh, neither of them bothered to show up at Arlington National Ceremony Cemetery for the ceremony there. Uh, Biden is in Delaware on uh, what they're calling his endless summer, his endless summer vacation at Den. Uh, again, after wrapping up his California vacation, he went right to Delaware to go on vacation there. Kamala is MIA entirely with absolutely nothing on her schedule for today. So this is this is pretty extraordinary stuff. But Matthew Foldy, you were at Arlington National Cemetery today uh, when President Trump was there for the ceremony. And uh, again, uh, Joe Biden was in the Santa Ynez Valley behind Santa Barbara for a week after the Democratic Convention in Chicago, got on Air Force One, flew to, to Delaware into Dover Air Force Base, where he usually checks his watch, you may recall, repeatedly. And he went to one of his multi-million dollar homes for another week of vacation. And they eventually put out a piece of paper, a brief piece of paper, saying, oh, yeah, was that three years ago today? Uh, Kamala did, the campaign did, and Joe Biden did. But President Trump was at Arlington National Cemetery today, where there was a ceremony for some of the Americans killed three years ago today. So it was actually for all 13 of them. And uh, Trump, this was actually the first time in the three years since the suicide attack, which was carried out by an ISIS-K terrorist released by the Taliban, who are now running Afghanistan, mm -hmm. after Biden gave up Bagram Air Base. There was a prison there. The Taliban let everyone out. And then one of these terrorists is who carried out the attack. This is the first time that a commander in chief, present or past, has ever honored uh, these 13 service members in a manner such as this. And uh, so what you saw today was there were two specific wreath layings for two of the 13, Taylor Hoover and Nicole G. And then the third one was for all of the Abbey Gate 13. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris did put out fairly meaningless statements today. They mm -hmm. have continued to not say the names of the 13 publicly ever. Neither have ever done this. Kamala Harris has never spoken to any of the Gold Star families. And so I wrote down the names of all 13, uh, Nicole G, Taylor Hoover, Kareem Nakui, Umberto Sanchez, Dylan Marola, Ryan Knaus, Jared Schmitz, Riley McCollum, Maxton Soviak, Hunter Lopez, Dagan Page, David Espinoza, and Johanny Rosario. And I've talked with some of their families today. It's not that hard, Kamala Harris. The, the phone mm -hmm. works both ways. You could talk to these people at any juncture, but I think they can't face up to the failures that they did. And to me, as an American and as a journalist, getting to meet some of these people's families, I think it's a, an important takeaway for us all to have that these, not only are these 13 service members heroes, uh, so are their families. And what they've gone through for the past three years is something, you know, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Well, and uh, Sarah, the, the, uh, the Democrats are big on this. Say their name mantra when you're talking about career criminals and drug addicts that die while attacking the police and so on. Those are heroes. But you still haven't heard Joe Biden or Kamala Harris say the names of these Americans. You would think they would. Honestly, they should be ashamed. And plus, at the same time, if you put them in the cemetery and said, okay, go find the 13, they, would, they wouldn't know where to start. They would bring someone up, and Joe Biden would probably be like, oh, is that my intern? It, it's just <laughs> disgusting. They should be ashamed. They should honestly be honoring it every year. Joe Biden was checking his watch, so he doesn't know what was going on. No, that's, a, that's a fact. Yeah, and foreign policy really normally doesn't play a huge role in public opinion, except when it does, it doesn't create moments, it creates movements. And in the exact same way that Barack Obama's rise was totally characterized by his opposition to the Iraq war, the precipitous decline in the polls of Biden and Harris, it was not even marked by the inflationary cycle, it was marked by the withdrawal. <clears throat> because we saw not only did we lose these American service members who we hold the most value to, but also we now see these millions of women who have fallen to Taliban rule who for 20 years because of American troops had access to education, had access to rights. Now Taliban new rule, women are not supposed to be seen or heard in public.